Hello everyone and welcome to State of the Realm, your weekly Final Fantasy XIV podcast. This week, there's only one topic anyone's talking about, there's only one topic that matters, and while we don't have the full picture on the whole thing, today we'll be giving you our first impressions of Ultimate Coil, the unending coils of Bahamut Ultimate, as well as the community's perception on it thus far. I am one of your hosts, Michael, Mr. Happy Pover. I'm of course joining me is Sly, aka Sly the Fox, aka Sly, aka Gray Fox, aka you my boy Blue, how you doing? I am tired as fuck, but I'm good. You're tired. You were up. You were up at uh, at Patch, and you you are gonna have some fun stories today because you actually have a unique experience to me regarding today mm -hmm. that I think will bring uh, some decent perspective, uh, an added perspective onto it. Definitely. Definitely. So, Sly, I'm gonna do something at the start of the show that I just want to do it now because if I don't do it now, what are the odds I forget, almost forget, for about the fucking f fucking fourth week in a row you want to you want to take care of it right right at the beginning of the i want to take care of, I, I want to take care of the sponsor list right at the fucking beginning of the show i want to do because idea. how many weeks in a row now have i just like at the end like, of the show bye oh wait shit i changed it i'm just can i just want to do it now sly yeah yeah let's just go ahead and get it out the way all right so for anyone who's wondering who doesn't make it to the end of shows usually we have people who sponsor the stream via patreon to counter hashtag demonetized over on youtube that way we don't have to withhold any content and we can start to produce some additional content especially now that twitchcon is officially over although sly has some traveling to do i still have some traveling to do and i'm actually moving into a los angeles apartment like this week so maybe a little bit longer for that so we're gonna thank those all right i'll i can't wait to show you slides it's gonna be crazy it's gonna be crazy it's gonna be crazy all right, so uh, I want to thank the sponsors. We have our standard sponsors of sour cream and chives, which just reminded me I didn't eat lunch because I only have hot foods and it's 105 degrees in San Diego, so I decided to starve instead. Uh, Elysian Lior from Balmung, Valestra of Fanfret, Renault Chikara, Kiriyoshi, Ignis Fairgun from the Diablo server, Goisha Valfer of Siren, Jean Francois, the Macho Lewis, Hirsch First of Fairy, Phoenix Down Free Company on Goblin, and Saren from Zodiac. Those are our standard sponsors. For our elite sponsors, we have Killtastic Jones, Arthur Emil Gaming Bishop, Darkblade 2013, Rawl Jr., Killer Hackman, Tin Colossus, Ahmed Kuran, Ione Abdullah, Kuja Cross of the Genova server, Nadi and Kurosame, Rudy Rudiger, Spike, Obai Del, Sh Del Shamsi, Aqua Sacrifice, Private Mikey, Janua Odin, on the Tom Berry server, Ira and the Avon Blanc free company on Zodiac. Uh, Nake, I think I have a spelled wrong. Naku, uh, Naku Niyame, yeah. Naku Niyame of Balmong. And someone who is elusively just known as Seth. <laughs> just Seth. Just Seth. That's it. Like, no, no in game name, just Seth. Seth. Could be Rogan for all I know. Could be Green. Could, no, could be neither. Who knows? That's it. So I want to thank those. Those at the beginning of the show as an apology for almost forgetting at the end of the last like three or four shows when we're on our way out the door. So thank you. And with that out thank of the you. way, let's get into talking about some ultimate today. So All right. Sly. Yeah. Your perspective, I said, was going to be unique. How well, has not... your first day of ultimate been thus far? I really wouldn't call it unique because I think there will be um there will be a lot of people who go in. I what he means by unique is that I went in with a pub because um, if I had not done that, I would be going in after Stay of the Realm with my stat. So I wanted to get some eyes on it and see what the mechanics were like and everything. Um, the experience wasn't bad. You like with everything, even with a pug, you know, people are actually doing this competent. And um, in terms of gear, like, like, Mike said dozens of times, there's no gear check. It's all skill. So well, there is a gear that, check. It's just having the best gear is what's expected of you here and nothing less. Right. And that's the thing, like, about the quote unquote gear check. I went in with a pug and, you know, I looked at everybody's gear. Everybody I went in was pretty much BIS. So this pretty much attracted the right crowd in terms of people who have been preparing for this, who are 
pretty much ready for this. Um, like gear wise, um, skill wise, you know, with the pug, I wasn't really expecting much, but I think with my experience early today, because I just basically, we just basically banged our heads against some Tanya. And if you, the thing is with a pug, even with a pug, if you bang your head against it long enough, shit will begin to click. It's not like you're just going to go in and wipe to the same thing over and over again. Even that's no, that's probably going to happen in the first 10 minutes. Um, you know, with, with the, the skill level of people who, you know, actually cleared O4S and our BIS, you know, you will see some decent progression. Uh, I think, well, I saw Enrage once, once or twice at Twintania. So, um, yeah, and that was just with the pub. So, what you're saying is you didn't get anyone who bought clears. You got people who earned clears. <laughs> Pretty. <laughs> It's so you're Thank wrong. God. Like uh, chat's bringing it up a lot. Like you, obviously, it's maybe a little more expected that the quality of pugs would be higher, because mm -hmm. O4 Savage is the requirement before you can even go into this. Right. Listen, man. Pug I've seen some pugs get through some get through some shit, man. Hey, I got my first O4 clear on a pug. There you go. That's fine. But I've seen some. Uh, it's that's one. Ex that's one type of experience for a pug. I've seen a. Uh, I've seen different kinds of experiences in pugs before, in O4 Savage. Mm -hmm. I've seen seen the other end of the spectrum there, yeah. even the ones you who always, may have already had a clear. Yeah, you'll always have, you know, terrible fucking pugs. But not you, because you cleared O4 Savage with the pug, and you almost got through phase one of Ultimate with a pug. With a pug, yeah. Mm. Gotta admit, still sounds pretty impressive on paper. And I'm sure you were pleasantly surprised to actually, like, be able... Because now you can take that into your static group tonight, depending on if they want you to actually, I guess, you know, spoil, but spoil. not but not really, yeah. like, it's it's more like guide, like, as your team figures it out. kind of, Like, instead of, hey, this is what we're going to do for the whole phase, it's going to be, like, as they're figuring it out, you can kind of guide them. I don't even think it's, you know, a matter of spoiling, because in, if you really look at the mechanics, like, it's not like it's once you really break down and look at it which it takes like a few wipes you pretty much got it got in the first part right? right right so so i think it's i don't think even if i were weren't to tell them it would be along the same lines of me telling them all right well why don't we break down that first part because i've seen into the second phase and currently mm -hmm. as of this state of the realm recording the live recording um, groups have just started to scrape the surface of the third phase, which, according to information that's been made public, is roughly 6 minutes and 30 seconds into an encounter that's anticipated to be over 12 minutes long. Mm -hmm. So, we'll cover at least the first 5 minutes, and then we can okay. talk a little bit about what's being seen and what's expected a little bit after that point. Mm -hmm. So you and I both have experience here with the first phase, and as Yoshi as Yoshida showed us, it starts with Twin Tanya. Yeah. Um, and your basic goal is to defeat Twin Tanya in three and a half minutes. If you do not do that, it's a wipe. Bottom line. Mm -hmm. So this is the first thing to point out. He said that the very first DPS check was going to be fairly intense. How intense would you rate it in terms of your experience? Like, what percentage were you at when you hit Enrage? Because you have to bring it to 1 HP. There's no, like, 5%, 10%. 1 HP right. in that time. We were about 20%. 20%? So that's, mm -hmm. I mean, that makes it sound, it sounds like you may have scraped by a few mechanics, like, just kind of barely when you did see Enrage. Yeah, people were people were dying to um, Twisters and shit, so we yeah. lost a few DPS there. Yeah. But do you think that that's, I guess, to see 20% know that there's no way this check gets more lenient, do you feel that, at least in terms of what's ex expected of the group from a DPS standpoint, that it is already presenting itself as kind of a, a, a tight check? I'm going to, like, I, I'm going to get, again, a little bit, I wouldn't say jaded, but with a different perspective. I don't know if it'll be different with my group. You know, because, like, going in with a, a random group. Um, I'd say consider it more like the first time people are seeing it. Instead of looking for static versus 
pug. Pug. If your uh-huh. pug is as qualified as it made it sound to be, I guess it's more like your static will be seeing it for the first time, and this pug saw mm. it for the first time. Do you expect the experiences to be similar? Uh, yeah, I, I expect them to be um, not you know vastly different, but I expect a different experience from my static as opposed to a pug in general. But in terms of the raw experience itself, yeah, I, I agree. I, I'd say it would be a similar experience with, you know, different. Um, the only thing that would be different probably would be the healing. I the healing? The healing, the healing was a little, a, little, a little bit light in the pug. Healing's always uh, <laughs> a little bit of an issue whenever we come mm-hmm. to uh, whenever whenever we come to end game encounters in general. Oh, yeah. we'll, and we'll talk about the responsibilities of different roles got as well. So Twin Tanya, as one phase, has that three minute thirty second check. Mm-hmm. Within that phase is three phases. Yep. So the first phase is one hundred percent to seventy five percent, or as it'll look like when you reach it, seventy four point nine percent, which is. When you hit 74% in-game, it means you've hit 74.9, so mm-hmm. just under 75%. And the same for 45% or in-game 44.9% when it actually ticks down. So those are when the phases separate. The first phase, straightforward. Yeah. Death sentence means tank means tank swap and yep. mass mitigations. Plummet comes right after, and you don't want that to hit the other tank. But the big thing is twisters plus fireball, which fireballs just stack up and split damage. Yeah. Um, so what was so Twisters? Twisters is probably like the main theme of the Twintanya fight. How was your reintroduction to Twisters at this? Because you didn't start playing till after you, till you didn't start raiding until Final Coil, and that was after Final Coil had already been out for a while. So this right. is kind of I guess your first real time getting to see Twisters. I would say it's my, it's my first real time Ex- experiencing it in a prog scenario. In a prog scenario, yeah. Um, as opposed to normal. You know, turn five, re or uh, getting reintroduced to twisters. I mean, it's you know, in turn five, all you had to do was just spread and just keep fucking moving and not you know cross anybody's path. Um, this one's kind of similar, I guess. The way we handle, uh, the way we anticipated we would handle it, it was very different from the way we actually handled it. Um, because when we looked, when we first saw this mechanic, we, we was think, okay, everybody, let's just stack. Let's just treat it like Southern Did Frost. The and then the exact same thing. And it didn't fucking work. <laughs> because, like, the timing the timing of the Twisters going down, that's the one thing we had to get really get used to. And I'm like, okay, we're, we're not, we're, we don't have all day to kind of get used to the timing. So let's just do it this way. We kind of did it, you know, I guess some people will call it, like, a flower pattern. Um, I like that name for it. I know where it's going. Yeah, because basically what you would do is you would just call compass positions and then you would just loop around. That's all you would do. You would just go when when Twisters was being cast, you would just start moving, drop your Twister in the middle of that movement and then stack in for uh, fire. And to be clear for a flower, everyone drops their Twister in their petal or, or attempts mm-hmm. to and then goes to where you would kind of consider the center of the flower. Or attempts to. <laughs> or attempts to, because sometimes people get a little ahead of themselves. Yeah, somehow sometimes people don't even fucking move. <laughs> yeah, it happens. Uh, to be fair, mm-hmm. this this uh, twister is is very lenient. I've moved mm-hmm. as as late as like halfway into the word twister, right, and avoided it. But I've seen people with even just the slightest latency do that, and it go pretty south. But I feel like the snapshot. I feel like the snapshot is pretty early in your movement. So even if you are moving, and then by the time you finish your little loop, your twister will probably j- drop in the beginning of your movement. So, like, right as you start your loop. Right. Yeah. You can just really make, like, a, what I do is I just kind of do, like, a small circle, just mm-hmm. a tiny one, and I just make sure not to cross back. I almost, like, basically I run, and then it's almost more like a, like a, like an oval, like a long oval. Yeah. 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 And then you just do, everyone does that, and it's a little pedal, and you're good to go. I think this is, uh, Twisters is, uh, um... One that doesn't require a lot of extravagant movement, and what I mean by that is like you don't have to run all the way out the east bump buck and then come right back. It's actually preferred that you would, you know, run a short distance to get to the stack rather than just go all the way out. Yeah, the only argument someone might have for going farther is the mm-hmm. attempt to if you fuck it up, you're far away from everyone. But realistically, if you're an ultimate, you're you're not fucking up is not the not an option. 
right. in the first place. And will that especially be prevalent when we talk about getting further closer to the end of the, the Twintanya DPS check? Mm-hmm. That's it. That's phase one. It's it's literally plummet, twister plus fireball, which does the fireball in the first phase doesn't do a whole lot, but it it gets more out it, of hand. It felt like like the first time we we actually hit it, and you know people weren't stacked. I mean, yeah, you're gonna you're gonna fucking die. But even with everybody stacked, like I would say this is where the importance of um, even though I haven't done it. You know, bit melts would definitely fucking help. Let me tell you how many times bit melts saved my ass. <laughs> Every time. <laughs> Anytime one person missed the stack, all I went was thank mm-hmm. you, bit melts. Thank you, bit melts. It felt really good, dude. I'm not regretting that. I, I highly recommend you go out and get bit melts if you're going into ultimate and you haven't yet. Please. One hundred percent recommend it, please. Especially the healers. Okay, that's it. That's the whole first phase. Simple. Yep. Puggable. Doable. Yep. Then uh, phase transition, Twintanya drops the necklace. So that's now you're now you have to start considering necklace placements, which was something back mm-hmm. in turn five. And for the next thirty percent, you now are dealing with hatch, or as most people will probably grow to know it as, if you don't use ACT, uh, would be um, generate, which is the spawning of an egg that will eventually hit you with an attack that calls that is called hatch. Mm-hmm. So. Um, what th- happens in this phase is Twintania also gains access to Liquid Hell, which is getting some conflicting reports because there's okay. been some very strong oddities with the way it works. What most people are reporting is that, and by the way, Liquid Hell is just Twintania spits a fireball at you, does like 4k damage, but if you stand in it too long, you get a tick, you get a dot tick, the dot tick will kill you. It doesn't matter. Yeah. You're dead if you t- if you get that burning effect, you're dead. That's the bottom line. Um... And what people were saying is the person furthest away can always bait these specific uh, liquid hells. That's what we thought, too. But at the same time, people were alive and still getting... And running into oddities occasionally. Mm -hmm. I found it's fairly consistent, but I feel like there's something else to it. Because there are times where the person furthest away just all of a sudden is not the person. I'm wondering if there's a... I'm beginning to wonder if there is a maximum range for it because sometimes we have someone who's, like, baited four of them in a row and then the fifth one just ends up in melee range randomly. Yeah. Yep. That's that's happened several times. Yeah. I don't I don't know if it's because it has a maximum range and then it doesn't know what target to acquire, so it just picks a random one. Or if it has something to do with range moving into melee range. I don't know. I it's can just, maybe say that because, like, you know... It depends on your Twintania placement, like where he is currently. All the way up um, against the wall is where I we usually for for phase two we have pretty close to the wall, and then the person baiting mm-hmm. the liquid hells is like on the complete opposite side, and they'll get like mm-hmm. three or four, and then one just targets somebody in melee range. We've had one where it would just automatically tar- target the melee range, and everybody was up at this point, and then all of a sudden like it's I get some drop it on me, and then I, of course I get fucking taken and die. Um, but yeah, but like all of our range are still out there, still at a good distance, and he will drop one right on melee. Yeah, and I we so before we started acting as if it was always range, that never happened. As soon as we started mm-hmm. designating someone to be all the way across the arena, then we started having that happen. Mm-hmm. So, uh, like until we started trying to do that, that never happened. Over literally like six hours, we never once had one in melee range. And then all of a sudden we were like, oh, it's max range, which wasn't really causing problems. But we decided, hey, we can control it a little bit easier. Let's do that. And all of a sudden one started popping in melee range. And I don't and I don't know. We've had a, we've had it target a red mage who's going in for the melee attack, which is more understandable, I feel. Yeah. But we've also had it target a tank and a melee DPS before. Yeah. So I don't know what's causing that, but I feel like red mages might be the cause of it. Because any time that has happened, it's been when the red mage dashes into melee range. Uh, did you have a red mage in your group? Uh, we did for a one lockout. Yeah, that's. I don't know. To, I I feel like red mage might be the key there. Um, I so I'm not sure. I'm not sure if it's just be when a red mage because it could be that when the red mage dashes in the melee range, it fucks with the targeting system somehow, and even it doesn't mm-hmm. even target the red mage every time. I don't know what it is, but right. uh, to anyone doing the fight, if you see any oddities like one randomly spawning in melee range and it's not even on the red mage, it, it may be something red mage bug related or something along those lines so um 
those things are way more of a pain in the ass than I think we give the range credit for. Because mm -hmm. I've seen what can happen with those liquid hells, and I've seen people who never stop running and still get a tick because of server ticks. They're not going to have a good time, man. Those liquid, I think those liquid hells are actually the hardest part of the entire first phase. I don't think it's the hatches, the twisters, anything. The most things I see get fucked up are, are like people getting cut off by liquid hells or shit like that. Yeah, the um, neural links getting cut off by liquid hells and you try to kind of slick dick it and you can't. Um, going a little bit further in, sorry. That's fine. Jump ahead. Um, one thing, because there will be a portion um, after this phase you will get a you'll get a second neural link, and then you have to deal with two hatches um there will be a point where you have to deal with twister and then your perspective hatch um that for well me was fire, the absolute easiest part of the fight for me that is easy one thing one thing that's interesting was the, the portion where you actually get the hatch and then the fireball um have you noticed whether or not because i never got to test there, if you're about theory. to ask me if there's a pattern here dude sometimes it looks like everything makes too much sense and then the next very next poll you realize yeah it did make too much sense not even a pattern have you tested or not whether you can survive a fireball on a neural link because i think it just happened that you know nobody was stacked and i think it was like me and one other person were stacked and i had fireball but i was on a neural link and the fireball hit and I was just fine with the two person stack. That doesn't so sound sure. right. Yeah, that I mean, yeah, that doesn't sound right. <laughs> like, will Neuralink um nullify the fireball damage? I mean, if you if you could cheese it that way, like fine. I wouldn't say fine, but like that's see, that's you know what I'm gonna present something to you. We thought this back in a realm reborn. Mm -hmm. <laughs> It's what it sounds like. I'm literally. We thought Fireball had to be mitigated with that neural because when we when when no one knew what Neuralink did in the original Titania, the first thing we thought was, oh, he dropped the Neuralink and then started doing these markers on the ground. We mm -hmm. thought the Neuralink slowed down the rate at which conflagrations exploded. We thought that you could reduce the damage with Fireball. Like we were looking for any use possible for the Neuralink, and oddly enough, we found times where it almost made sense, and then we realized that it doesn't. <laughs> so. That might be something wrong if I actually survive that. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe at a crit yeah. low. I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> it still doesn't sound possible, but uh, crit lows can sometimes work magics that are not intended. But I can tell you right mm -hmm. now, if it was you and one other person, that's a hundred and something thousand damage each. Yeah, that's uh, that's pretty rough. <laughs> so with the liquid hells, then you move into um, hatch. Now, hatch works a little differently here. When the egg explodes, it's in a huge AoE. Not mm -hmm. enormous, but you don't want to be near the Neuralink. Twister size, basically. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, uh, you might as... Uh, the, way, the way it works, it tracks onto somebody. It's, you can't really have, just have a tank eat them all in melee range. You f I actually figured out, feasibly, even though it gives you a debuff, you could have the same person eat a hatch every time. But eating them in melee range, like with Twintani just sitting on a Neuralink... Not really, not really something I would consider an option. Are you talking about the debuff that the, um, the Neuralink gives you, or the well, the debuff itself? that you have to stand in the Neuralink to get mm -hmm. hatch, and if when hatch hits you, hatch says you will take more damage from the next hatch. The next hatch. But yeah. what I notice is I've been targeted by two, three, four hatches in a row, and they're never. It's never at a point where I'm like, oh, well, this debuff means I can't eat the next hatch. So I'm beginning to think that's for later in the fight. Like, Hatch probably comes back, and it's at a point where it's going fast enough to the point where you... Like, if you were handling it a certain way in the early phase, you probably mm -hmm. can't anymore. Um, mm -hmm. Because the debuff just seems so meaningless to me when I was doing it in the first phase. So I'm going to assume that's setting something up for later. Mm -hmm. uh, but we what we did is we just... We had a neural link. We put it, like, kind of close to the middle of the room, but not dead center. Um, mm -hmm. Just off center a little bit. And then we dragged the second neural link closer to the wall... And then from that position, we would just have whoever had the neural link would just, or whoever had the hatch marker would just go into the, the neural link. Mm -hmm. It's that similar to what you guys did. You just like had it at range and you just lost the GCD, pretty much to go yeah. step in it. Yeah, pretty much, pretty much. Yeah, I'm gonna assume there's some final phase shenanigans there, that uh, that we we won't see for some time. Um, and then again, this that's kind of just it. There's still death sentences. There's still plummets. Um, 
but it alternates between you needing to do the so he does he does liquid hell hatch liquid hell and then he does liquid hell hatch twisters pretty much he alternates between using twisters and liquid hell here and that's it again it's such a straightforward fight it's just one mistake's gonna fuck you and again we'll get into that as we talk about the final phase final phase now there's two hatches that's realistically the only major difference in the final phase is that there's two hatches and that in itself wasn't really hard to handle i mean no because you have two probably equally spread out neural links at this point right the only other key difference is that liquid hell when he's casting fireball on somebody liquid hell will just target one person at random it could be a tank a melee a healer we've had it target every single person in the raid at some point and it'll mm-hmm. just go after them five times in a row which means they have complete control for the only time in the fight they have complete control of where they can drop the liquid hell mm-hmm. and so at that point you just make sure it's not in the way of people which sometimes is easier said than done but yeah exactly yeah exactly um, how many times were you trapped by Liquid Hells in that phase? I'm a melee. I don't get trapped. The range get fucked all the time. But really? yeah, no melee. I've never, I've never been, uh, I've never been fucked by it. Even with like, in during that phase, you never had Liquid Hell shenanigans to where you would get one or any, anything. Like oh, that I've too. gotten one, but I've never been trapped by one. Okay. Basically, the way we do it is uh, we have both the tanks kind of just right next to each other. And we have two melees, so one melee take left side, one melee take right. And mm. it's just whoever gets it just runs off to the side that they're closest to. So, like, if one of the, the one of the people on the right gets it, they just start running to the right, and then everyone stacks center. If one of the two people on the left gets it, we run off to the left, and then, uh, and then everyone else just stacks with fireball right there. Yeah. So... I don't know. The only thing that still fucks with me is the Liquid Hell randomly appearing in melee range in the second phase. Mm-hmm. Other than that, the first phase, uh, Twintanya, I can understand what... So Yoshi P was saying that if you can't even do this, don't even think about the rest of the fight. And I get that statement now. Because Twintanya is re- reasonable, I feel. Yeah, it's a, it's a fair statement. It's a fair uh, assessment of um, the shit that I haven't seen, the shit that we're going to see. Um, it's... I don't want to call it fast. It'd be really easy to call it. Dormant, I've been calling but... it onslaughter, like a eight savage, because mm-hmm. that's to me more more the truth. Onslaughter, you, you defeat him, and then you go into what I consider the real first phase, which is the four robots. Mm-hmm. And here, I would consider nail the real first phase, almost in a sense. Like the first okay. phase is there, and it's got mechanics that you can fuck up, and you know you're gonna fuck them up <laughs> while you're learning it. But ultimately, as a phase, it's it's not super long and it's not super detailed. So, um, so with that out of the way, the first part of Ultimate Twintania, um, just as you thought, um, uh, higher, like a little bit more difficult than expected, uh, fun factor, what are you thinking? Um, so Twintania is a good start. Twintania is, uh, is a fun first three and a half minutes of the fight. It, mm-hmm. of course, is going to wear down on you as you then want to prog the latter six, you know, six to nine minutes of the fight. Which we're mm. presuming it's a minimum twelve minute fight. Like that's the, the Neo X Death was twelve minutes thirty seconds. We were told this would be on the lengthy side, so that's what our current assumptions are: is a minimum of twelve to twelve and a half minutes, potentially longer. Um, this is the first three and a half minutes. Which, by the way, again, this DPS check can be really tight. We found that any deaths on a DPS were detrimental. Not to the point of unrecoverability, but we basically have to substitute a death with a melee limit break, and we're more than certain that's going to fuck us later. The use of a, a tier one melee LB in the first phase. We're almost certain that's going to fuck us, and we don't really want to avoid it. Um, right. The worst thing is that, a lot like Neo X Death, there's not really great times to res during yeah. this fight. You bring up a really good I find that you. if you're going to resurrect someone, you need to run into melee range where the liquid hells are least likely to be. Or you're, mm-hmm. or they're, they, there's just a good chance they die again. The reason being, when you're resurrected, if you resurrect into a liquid hell, it won't kill you immediately, but it'll give you the dot effect, and as soon as you can take damage, that dot will kill you. Yeah. And on top of that, the hatch explosion goes through death immunity, and uh, I'm pretty sure that there's one other thing. I know that the fireball doesn't go through death immunity because I've resed into the fireball and survived mm-hmm. it. I just the damage didn't look to be reduced at all. Um. 
So yeah, I mean that's it's a tight check, which is good because while Tintani is not a Faust, it is kind of like a it, again if you can't do this, you don't really deserve the rest of the fight kind of deal. You're not ready for the rest of the fight if you can't even do this. So it's it's I guess it's not. I'm trying to find a fight. I think of a fight that's less that's less true for. I say the original Twin the very final phase where it's just liquid hells and hatches, um, was probably the easiest phase from the second phase. Second second phase, uh, ad phase and third phase were harder than Twin original final phase. And I'd say that's it's the opposite here. In a sense, right. where Trentania is as a whole as a first phase is absolutely the easiest you're ever going to have it, which is an understatement. Uh, were you disappointed by the lack of a uh, of a death knight mechanic? No, because there was a, there's a lot of there's a lot of Trentania mechanics that aren't there, and we'll mm -hmm. get into the mechanics that made it from normal modes to savage or to ultimate when we go through the ability list on XIVDB. Mm -hmm. um, that being said, there's I mean there's conflagrations aren't there either. Um, yeah. The fireballs in normal mode used to speed up the rate at which conflagrations were there, but they seem to focus more on trying to get people, uh, the whole party, to be in position to split damage for the fireballs here, as opposed to having mm -hmm. them have anything to do with conflagrations. So, uh, and they had a lot of bugs with conflagrations before, so I'm not super surprised right. at that. They shrunk the arena, so across all the phases, it's consistent, it's flat, and there's no shenanigans with the fucking the, the fucking the, the, hand. Yeah, yeah, with the with the off with the off like kilter of the hand um and then like you said you just mentioned uh there were no dread knight shenanigans no cc that needed to come out through all that i'm not surprised to see all that stuff gone because this is only three and a half minutes of literally this is just the first part of the fight yeah no haste either like we like we thought there would be yeah no haste the, uh, oh the twister is pretty fucking fast the whole time i don't think it needs any haste <laughs> but I, I will say this like it felt like the timing and this may have just been me looking at it like me really trying to look at twisters the, the timing that it drops down or the snapshot uh it it seemed like the first twister kind of dropped a little bit later than the second twister in terms of the snapshot i don't know i tried to i tried to really look at the the timing of the snapshot during the cast bar and it it seemed different to me i don't know if it seemed different to you but it seemed different based on latency not just different for the sake of being different in a okay. sense, like my connection in any if it, it is in any way different than the other person's connection, it throws it off, which is why the whole stacking and trying to move doesn't work because I mm -hmm. may need to move at a different. It was it was why for dive bombs when I tried to do dive bombs without doing it in the dip back in the day, we had to move mm -hmm. beforehand because we had to be ahead of the latency of the game. Although it was way worse back then. Right. Um. So this first phase People is think oh god, an ad is playing. XIVDB decided to play an ad that was very loud right there. So I'll be sure to mute that tab when I reopen it. Um, so this is the first, so okay, this is done for the first three and a half minutes. Now I do have some experience with the second phase and let me tell yes. you, fuck you Square Enix. <laughs> <laughs> Will you make us so happy when you make it to the second phase? You get Twin Tanya down, Twin Tanya's got 5.5 million HP. You need 26.2K raid DPS to beat it. You fucking get that shit down. You avoid the ethereal profusion, which instantly kills you if you don't beat it in 210 seconds. You, Twin Tanya drops the last neural link and then leaves. Doesn't die, just leaves. She'll be back later. And the arena starts changing, and you're like, oh, I know what's coming next. Heaven's Fall. Because you, you, you've, if you did turn nine, you know what the transition to Heaven's Fall looks like. And the arena does mm -hmm. the exact same thing. So you figure it out pretty quick. Yeah. What you don't figure out is that Nail is an asshole. So Nail immediately does uh, what I think they're called their Meteor. Here, I have the name right here Meteor Stream. Meteor Stream is basically just a bunch of targeted AoEs with no markers whatsoever. It, it's kind of like the mm -hmm. Fire Threes in um, in Neo X Death Delta Attack, or even in I guess regular X Death Dual Cast Fire Three, right. where it hits so it hits four people first, and it hits the other four people. I almost wonder if it's five and then five. I feel like so, I, I remember back in the day, turn nine, someone always got overlap, and you needed to make sure there was a heal in between to make sure they survived. Mm -hmm. um, but you basically you need to spread out. And there's no way you're going to know this going into this phase. It is literally like, the okay, everyone stack up, heal, and he just, she just smacks you down immediately. Like, you're almost no one's going to get to that phase blind and immediately go, guys, spread out in case there's AoEs. You're going to fucking die. <laughs> and it's great. Because <laughs> the, the phase transition comes with the music transition. You're like, oh, and it's gone. 
so so that AOE, um, you say spread out. Um, how hard does the AO hit, AOE hit a single person? Or, um, like if you're spread out. With an Adlo, I, I'm sorry, with just the sucker, no crit Adlos, mm -hmm. no deploys or anything, it only did like 24,000 to me, which is more than half my health, which means I just can't take more than two of them. Um, right. So it's not that unreasonable. The problem is Heaven's Fall hits you, so you need to have heals that are timed in such a way that they're going off as Heaven Fall hits, so the healers mm -hmm. don't need to either spend in a size or an extra GCD, or off GCD trying to take care of you. Things like Second Wind, Fist of Earth, Shade Shift... All those come in, in major handy if you have any way to directly mitigate physical damage that's coming out to you. It's or heal up afterwards. It's the most valuable. Uh, the spreading out is not that bad. It's it's pretty lenient. The AOEs aren't huge, and the pattern for Heaven's Fall is just uh, it's not the piano it's, pattern. It's just like is it still the pizza slices? It's pizza slices. To... Yeah. Okay. It's alternating yeah. pizza slices at first. So it's 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 a pretty okay. forgiving first Heaven's Fall pattern. Um, but then. You think that, okay, I overcame the assholery that is her immediately doing AoEs on everybody. Okay, f okay, we took care of that. All right. She then immediately lunges onto the tank with an AoE that obviously if you're on the tank, you're dead if you're not the tank. And then she does Bahamut's Claw like five times. She's just like, psh, 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 psh. And you know what? You're not going to be ready for that the first time, and that's going to kill your tank. <laughs> So just when you overcome one asshole thing she does, so you don't you don't think they'll have like, like they'll spot have like a, a home gang or um, a warrior might be a, like a tank might be able to pop it off in in time in time, but you're gonna yeah. be scared shitless the whole time. We honestly <laughs> we use hollowed or home gang there just like as soon as soon as we see her land and she's targetable, warrior home gangs or the paladin can hollowed or hallowed before uh, she even hits the ground. Pretty much. How far? How far up between um, her hitting the ground and then the claw? Is Literally like, like a second. Oh, by the way, she's auto attacking while doing the Bahamut's claws, and the auto attacks. Oh can, wow! And the auto attacks can crit, as my chat is is making sure to remind me. And the crits can do like double the damage of the Bahamut's claw. So it's like Bahamut's claw auto potential crit double damage claw claw auto claw. <laughs> It's easily one of the most fuck you, like, hey, welcome to phase twos I've ever seen in this game. And I've done the old savages, including second coil, which this is obviously being compared to. Coil has mm -hmm. now met, been met with three difficulties. Let's just remember that in a sense. Even if ultimate is its own thing. Um, so if you get past that, great. You're not even remotely prepared for what's going to happen after that. <laughs> Okay, so you know how there were three dragons <laughs> in the original turn nine? And they had like a bunch of different fancy patterns and stuff like that? Yeah, there's five dragons now. <laughs> and sometimes they come in one pack of three and a pack of two. Sometimes there's five of them lined across. And you're just like, okay. <laughs> and these are our dots. They're going to be at some point. Around probably like just under 60%, you'll probably hit the dive bomb there, depending on what mm -hmm. your DPS is looking like. Oh, and I'd like to point out that from the second that Twintania leaves the arena, you have three minutes to knock Nail down to 1%. So you have three and a half minutes for Twintania. Nail has slightly less HP, but is way more of an asshole. And... And that's included, and those three minutes are including the downtime for Heaven's Fall and all the other mechanics to kind of go off before she actually comes down. Or right. Okay. Six minutes and 30 seconds should be your timer on the clock when you hit Bahamut, pretty much. Right. So um, so she comes down, she does this, she summons five dragons. She comes down, summons five dragons. Uses mm -hmm. Bahamut's favor, gives herself a dam permanent damage stack. So that Bahamut's claw that you dealt with before, those doubles, double crit autos, they're hitting a little harder now. No, whatever. It's not a big okay. deal. Each of those dragons has a responsibility. Of course. Yes, they do. So two people will get marked with Thunderstruck, which is kind of like Forked Lightning. Uh, it's the original mm -hmm. Forked Lightning, actually, um, looking back. I Yeah, I think it's the, the OG, where pretty much uh, you need those people away from each other and away from the rest of the party. If you did turn 9 Savage, you're pretty quick to figure out how you need to do that to some degree, where you do like a triangle formation where everyone's in one spot and the two Thunderstruck targets are in a triangle, yeah, are in the two remaining points. So you figure that out quick if you did turn 9 Savage, whatever. 
you still have to deal with the fact that if anyone gets hit by an ice ball twice, which is just they're just spitting at, at the targets until all eight people are hit, then it rotates around again. Um, then you instantly die. So you need to counteract that with fireballs. The problem is fireballs are never just like a, hey, I'm here, and great, we'll split the fireball and we'll do the next mechanic. You need to be moving. Remember how you didn't want to do twisters moving at the same time because everyone's moving at different speeds or like starting to react to the mechanic at a different time? It starts mm -hmm. to feel you got to learn to kind of do that with the fire because Nail has no cast times on any of her abilities. You know how you tell what ability she's going to use? Yeah. The role play. She's no cast times. Lunar Dynamo is instant. And you have no way to know if it's going to be Lunar Dynamo, if it's going to be Thermiotic Beam. It's going to be Iron Chariot. You know what you got to do? You got to read the RP or the text that she says before she does the mechanic. She can say so there's flavor text? There's like flavor the text. Okay. Yeah. It's in your chat. It's over her head. You got to read the RP. And basically, she could say something like, Oh, red moon, come uh, smite, smiteth my foe, or something like that. And that means Thermionic. she's going to do lunar dynamo into thermionic beam. Mm. She can then say, like, Oh, blue moon, uh, show me the path of conquest. And that means that she's going to do um, thermionic beam into iron chariot. It's generally the theme seems to be if she's talking about conquest for the first two, you're getting an iron chariot. If she's talking about smiting you, in the first one, if she's talking about smiting you, you're getting a thermiotic beam, pretty much. Mm -hmm. But you have to read that flavor text or have an ACT trigger, I guess. <laughs> I guess. That's that's the other way. Um, and uh, it, that continues on throughout the rest of the fight. There's Basically, she'll always do two, atta two attacks back to back. The first one's usually predictable, and then the second one is based on whatever the flavor text actually said. So you got to be able to react to that. Hmm. Yeah, we realized that as we were like, wait, we had the Iron Chariot last time. All of a sudden, we started reading the flavor text. We're like, it's a little more predictable than you think. It's more predictable because you could do the same thing for Shinryu, but Shinryu also had the fucking cast bars on his wings. Yeah. She doesn't have any. She literally has no cast bars, period, on anything. What? Not even in like an enemy list like Shinryu had? No. Um, it's instant cast. Everything she does is instant cast, pretty much. So, the only things you can see are the fireballs and the thunderstruck debuffs. So, that's going to be fun. Progging for people who don't ever pay attention to chat text. I'm having a hard enough time with the colors, dude. I don't need to fucking read. So, that's going to be fun. And then, because there's no dragons that like you have to kill, like in the Heaven's Fall phase of the original, she gives you mm -hmm. a, new f a new mechanic that's kind of like it. Where she gives two people or three people, maybe even later it's four, I don't know, it could keep going, a doom. And if you don't cleanse the doom before it wears off, you die. Now do you have to cleanse it in the same way that you had to cleanse the uh, debuff from normal? The know? garot? The, ga yeah, the garot? The mm -hmm. So there's no dragon to kill. Instead, one of the five flying dragons will spit an AoE on the ground. If you're in it and it explodes, you die. But mm -hmm. after it hits, it leaves behind a puddle, and it, she staggers them. So basically, she'll do one, and then the dragon will do another one. So you need to see, if someone has six seconds left on Doom and ten seconds left on Doom, the six-second person needs to go cleanse it first, and the ten-second person needs to go clear it second. So it's one per puddle. Yeah, one per puddle. And then eventually, it's like there's a 14-second Doom, and there's a third puddle that you need to do, etc., etc. Mm -hmm. So, and it just... And then there's dive bombs after that, and... Then there's Raven's Dive, which is like the Brute Justice Punch. The one that you know, it goes to the furthest target. That can be followed up by either an Iron Chariot or a Lunar Dynamo. And all this time, you are still under the very strict three-minute DPS check that uh, is laid forth for you. So, literally not fucking around. <laughs> and you will die so many times on Twintania by the time you actually get to fucking, like, actually learn to prog on Nail. Fun times. Remember, you asked for this. I did. When ask I say for this. you. I'm excited. Like, like when I say you, I mean everybody. No, you mean me. I asked for this. I'm yeah. still upset the twisters don't follow you, to be honest. But and there's no bees that have Nisi. That's a problem, also. Yeah, dude. Why don't the twisters just follow you? So you have to kite them around for like three seconds. What the fuck? I'm gonna write to Yoshi P and tell him the first phase was too easy. 
You would be the asshole. So <laughs> <laughs> like adding on to adding all insult to injury now. What the fuck? Like everything's fine. I think right now, where we're where we see it, is it, it, it's a really good place. This is a really good place. Don't fucking touch it. Like, dear like the, Yoshi P. I, no, no. I find that the ultimate coil encounter is awesome. It's not however, ultimate. It's not ultimate enough. However, <laughs> the first phase seems too easy. Why wasn't it harder? <laughs> he would be the only asshole to say that ultimate isn't ultimate enough. And oh, no, no, no. The second phase is ultimate enough. The first phase is not ultimate enough. All right. It's your, but that's your break. That's the only break you're going to get in this. There's no breaks, man. That, I call that a break. That's the I mean, start. A, you what do you show up to work and you're like, all right, I'm here. Time to take a break. <laughs> It, it, well, let's, let's just call it the easiest, the easiest phase. It, it, I call it a break because after that, you're 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 pretty much you're pretty much on edge the entire time, the rest of the time. And we don't even we you haven't even seen third phase, have you? Uh, well, I can tell you a little bit about the third phase based on what social media has uh, has has gifted us that a certain a certain. Uh... A certain Fold. a certain Twitter entity known as uh, Pre Nerfed Twisters, aka at Fold Please, oh, had uh, his drawings. Had, drawing. had these had these words to say. Um, so between turn three and triple triad, between pizza with mayo peas and orange ju juice with toothpaste, ha 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 ha, fuck my asshole, daddy. Between microwaved bacon and pouring water in cereal. For those of the podcast, no, it didn't break. He's just processing that right quick. Repeat that one more time. Are you really sure you need me to say it one more time out loud? Sure. This is Fold we're talking about. Go ahead. And this is, by the way, he tweeted those last two. Well, he tw tw tweeted those last three after reaching phase three. Mm -hmm. um, I will repeat. I will repeat them from the top. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. He also had this these things to say. This fight's great. Uh LRT Big Nut. This fight is a fucking nightmare. K F G J A F L K G J A. Wow, he's got a pretty good pattern for that considering it seems to be complete gibberish. This is a beautiful encounter. But then the things you wanted me to repeat were between turn three and triple triad, between pizza with mayo peas and orange juice with toothpaste. Ha 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 ha. Fuck my asshole daddy between microwaved bacon and pouring water and cereal. He also tweeted a picture of conflagration and asked, uh, what is it? And he also tweeted this, oh, wed moon, shine thy path to conquest. He spelled it all fucked up, which is one of the things Nail says when, Nail says, yeah. when the conquest is how you know that she's doing iron chariot um yeah so that's that's fold's opinion so far have any uh any words for that after you read that i don't even know what words are anymore well the reason why he's tweeting that is uh they've so another another person i believe the person in his raid group uh runia on Twitter, mm -hmm. is also tweeting about the Phase 3 transition. And some JP groups and some other groups have been posting about what the Phase 3 transition looks like. Um, what apparently happens is uh, Bahamut doesn't just show up. He shows up in extravagant style. He shows up with a new ability called... And I want you to process the name of this ability very slowly because it's going to sound familiar. 7th Umbral Era. <laughs> That's the name of the ability... That will deal damage to you. What it actually is, is it's Dalamud hitting the arena. <laughs> so no Louis Swa, no nothing. Just no, oh no, we're gonna get to that. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna get to that. <laughs> um, um so to show I'll, I'll pull up a screenshot here real quick on my Twitter. Uh, it's gonna take me a second here because I do have it I do have to pull it up in the case of some other screenshots. 
Uh, again, thank you. Reunia has been the one retweeting these, and I've just kind of been following them um, along on social media. Eh, that looks okay enough. So that's what it looks like on the actual uh, on on the actual screen. Sly, so you'll see it in a second here. Um, uh -huh. it, I can on I can show you something even uh, even even better than that, I suppose, because. That's uh that's Dalamud. That's basically a fiery Bahamut Dalamud. This is what it actually looks like in terms of what will happen to your party right here. <laughs> Can I enlarge this by any by any chance? Is there any way for me to enlarge this? No, I don't think there is. I guess that's as big I guess I could always uh hold on. I could always I could always modify the actual scene on the str I mean, I don't care if it's unprofessional. I'm just trying to make it bigger so everyone can see it a little bit easier. There you go. Boop! <laughs> Boop! <laughs> it just, they're all dead instantly. That's it. You get hit so hard, you get knocked back to 1.0. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I mean, that's, that's the equivalent. What the fuck? Yeah, I mean... So, to be clear, I think the damage is proximity-based, because initially upon taking the hit, according to this tweet from from Reunia, 7th Umbral Era hit him for for 59,000. I don't... It's such a clean number, I couldn't... I, I have to believe that this is a set number based on distance. Mm-hmm. Um, just because... We just saw them take 73,000, and they were, like, really close to the center. I'd have to assume this is a little bit further away. So it's going to really test how well you can uh, distance yourself without getting knocked all the way into the wall, I'd assume. Mm. Um, on top of that, you can see some other just screenshots of it. Some of them link to Gyazo things, and it's kind of hard to see. But one of the yeah. more exciting things was tweeted by him was actually... Or no, someone that was tweeted by one of the Japanese groups is... I guess what it looks like when he breaks free, so when you actually surpass that phase. Um, it's hard to tell because right here it says that the time into the encounter is only 6 minutes and 17 seconds, which we're, which is contrary to what we heard earlier about the 6 minutes and 30 mm. seconds. Uh, so that's just Bahamut. It uh, looks like he's just broken out of Dalamud, for lack of, uh, for lack of a better word. So yeah. that seems that seems to be the majority of what's going on right here. Also, their raid DPS at this point is 28,276, which is uh, pretty interesting as a whole. And, uh, yeah, I think here's another... No, that's not really a great screenshot. Just a little, another little preview screenshot. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, those are thanks to Reunia and uh, his retweets. I mean, I may not know exactly how he's doing, but I know, I can I get to see te teensy bits of the parts I haven't seen before. Does, are you not? Are you not excited to get to phase three after even just seeing the fireball? Just in how could second? you? How could you not be? You want to get even more that? excited, Sly? Sure, but what after getting knocked back to one point oh? What can? What else can there be? So XIVDB generally uh, has basically like all actions and all items mm -hmm. on the website. Um, so basically, if you ever want to know the names of new actions that are coming out with, uh, with uh, a patch, including enemy actions, which is what we're going to be reading from here, you can read them on XIVDB. And we've got a lot of great names for the new abilities that, have <laughs> that give us a little bit more of a teaser that, of what we can expect. So are, are you ready to hear some of the names of some of the abilities, Sly? Sure, go right ahead. I want your raw reactions to some of these abilities, all right? All right. Exaflare Strike... <laughs> Look at this fucking act. Then four different versions of Exaflare. Now this is the one that excites me. Flames of Rebirth. Sly, would you like to tell people where Flames of Rebirth originated? Well, turn twelve, Phoenix. That is correct. That is correct. <laughs> uh, oh, and then by the way, three more versions of Exaflare after that. Um, you have three versions of Mourn Afa, which I don't believe belongs to Shin. I don't know if these abilities belong to Shin. No, these are patch 4.11. These were added. Yeah, thank you, XIVDB. Um, three different versions of Mourn Afa, two different versions of Akmorn, Terra Flare, Bahamut's Favor, Grand Octet. Now, here's where the fun begins. Ten Strike Trio, 
Trio is going to be the key word here. Heaven's Fall Trio. Fell Ruin Trio. Blackfire Trio. Trio. Quick March Trio. Trio. And then that's all the trios, I think. You uh, sure? Yeah, but when we've got Mega Flare Dive, that makes you feel better. Trio? Yeah, and Mega Flare Strike <laughs> and Mega Flare and Mega Flare and Mega Flare and Mega Flare and Mega Flare. And Earthshaker and Earthshaker, Tempest Wing, Tempest Wing, Giga Flare, Flatten, Flare Breath, Calamitous Blaze, Calamitous Flame, Seventh Umbral Era, Cauterize, 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 one for each of the five fucking dragons that was in the air last time. Wings of Salvation, <laughs> Death Storm, <laughs> Chain Lightning, Chain Lightning again, Ice Ball, Fireball, White Fury, that's racist, Lunar Dive, Bahamut's Favor, <laughs> Dalam with Dive, Meteor Stream, Hypernova, which is the same name of an ability from Shinryu, Raven mm -hmm. Dive, Thermionic Beam, Lunar Dynamo, Iron Chariot, Nails, Mega mm. Flare again, Thermionic mm. Burst, Heaven's Fall, Heaven's Fall, Raven's Beak, Bahamut's Claw, Twin Fury, Twisting Dive, Etheric Profusion, Deep Hatch, Hatch, Generate, Liquid Hell, Fireball, Twister, Twin Twister, Sonia. Death yeah. Sentence, Plummet. Yeah, fuck me up, fam. <laughs> Fuck me up, fam. That's all I can say. Fuck me up, fam. Go right ahead. We we asked for this. Dude, Fuck as soon as up, I fam. saw Flames of Rebirth and Blackfire Trio, because Blackfire is another mechanic from Turn 12, I can't imagine we actually fight the Phoenix, but we know that the Phoenix is enthralled to mm. Bahamut in, in when we actually encounter him. So there has to be some sort of callback to Louis Soie's portion of the encounter with, uh, with Bahamut. I'd have to imagine. We asked for this. <laughs> Chat says, Sly, you're raining sober tonight? <laughs> he's gonna need... <laughs> he's gonna need even more to drink. Are you kidding oh, me? Are you fucking kidding me? He's gonna need oh, even God. more to drink. But see, the thing is, I only have one night of Prague this week. This is gonna be like a rough night for just one fucking night. I, I feel bad because I'm not gonna be there on Thursday for this shit. They have to rep me on Thursday, but God. Oh my god. You gotta look forward to next week, my friend. Mm -hmm. So that's XIVDB. Now, that's all we actually know about the fight, Sly. <laughs> Seems like you're still processing that. Because you say that's all we know. What about the shit we don't know? Well, we know the names of all the abilities at the very least. Yeah? <laughs> yeah? Yeah? You sure? You sure they didn't miss one? No, you, you don't think it's they're, possible. They're pretty thorough. They're pretty thorough. Okay, all right. So, I want to get the opinion out of you about the most important thing about ultimate. Is it worth giving up a dungeon for this? Fuck yeah! <laughs> now, to be fair, we probably did. It's not 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 necessarily a one to one ratio. This is not the same as developing a new dungeon with all new assets. While yes, the there are clearly new abilities and new animations that have been added mm -hmm. to these encounters. They are ultimately borrowing all old scenery and old models for everything. Mm -hmm. And thus, the development time of this is not the same as having artists develop an entirely new dungeon and, th and graphic designers three-dimensionally mold them and everything from scratch. Mm -hmm. But the biggest, the biggest conflict here is the dungeon is given... Everyone, everyone does dungeons. Even if you like, you don't like do dungeons like expert every day. Like community right. is, it's a more, it's something that more of the community immediately accesses. But the question is, like, and this is this is to you know the people doing the content. Which would you prefer, a dungeon, and if you are still doing, if you are still doing weekly uh, weekly clears on um, Omega, a dungeon, and you just do a weekly clear. Or new raid prog. I'm gonna take the new raid prog every time. Fuck, we're bis already. There's no reason for us to really go back in Omega for anything, unless you're trying to get some shit for an uh, for an alt job. Other than that, no reason. I want this. <laughs> I asked for this. Now to be I clear, take this. to be clear, we are people who raid, so clearly we are of that. We are on that side as a whole. So obviously we're biased. Right. Towards the side of wanting content like this. Something that will 
take a while to consume and may not we may mm-hmm. not beat it who knows i fully anticipate beating it but there are other raiders out there who may beat l4 savage that this may be their a3 savage you know mm-hmm. their group dissolves because they couldn't beat ultimate and there's gonna be groups that go you know what we knew that that was weighing we were weighing over our heads anyway we're just looking for something to do between patches but do you feel I don't, go ahead do you feel that the community at large needed things like this or did we need more things that fill the gap between the dungeons and the actual raids? Honestly, well... As well, the chat would this, call it, mid-core content, yes. With this, you're speaking to, speaking to a certain demographic. Now, I'd be biased in saying we do need things like this to kind of shake it up. Right. Uh, the, content, the content we get, um, I wouldn't call it filler content. But um, the content that we do get, as opposed to this, um, seems a little, I wouldn't say short-sighted. Yeah, you will probably keep doing it in terms of like a dungeon or something like that. Um, it has more replayability. Um, but I'm here for the challenge, bro. I'm here for the challenge. So I'm going to take this from the chat right here. Um, mm-hmm. Why not both, I suppose? Do you think they have to make a choice? When they would they because clearly the, the 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 more direct comparison I was making with that question was mm-hmm. in four point one one was it yeah. more valuable to do this or would it have been more valuable to add more things that bridge the the gap uh, the stepping stones into the raid scene or do you feel that or maybe even things that are as Shinri was placed between o two o three or maybe between o three o four things to bridge those gaps more clearly or do you think that just shooting up to this insane challenge was the right decision? honestly think this was the way to go because if you do content okay we we got we just recently got shinryu uh, ex um you get content like that and for for some people it doesn't live up to the hype it was expected um there are there's always that possibility of you know i wouldn't call it lesser content but filler content that it's not going to be what you expected and you're going to have to deal with that filler content until the next until the next patch this um in terms of the world first groups yeah it's gonna probably take a few days in terms of the general public the general you know hardcore to make poor raiders who aren't world first but yet still progging this it's gonna take slightly longer but it's still it's still something um i feel that's necessary for um the that demographic hardcore mid poor raiders uh we we don't give a shit about the the right now we don't give a shit about like a dungeon or anything and like once we actually get that we're just waiting on the next fucking raid tier that's pretty much all we're killing time so um mm-hmm. then i so with that out of the way so versus hardcore versus midcore do you think there's value in the discussion drummed up from this that while the content may not be accessible the discussion about it is accessible do you think that that the drumming up of discussion about such content is valuable to the community or not? I feel like it gets drawn out. Like every time we have something this polarizing, like we always come back to this discussion of accessibility uh, and uh, content, you know, for, uh, for a certain group as opposed to content for everyone. We've had this discussion in terms of, you know, putting story behind coil and then you know them doing normal and um story and then sad it, it, we always come back to this and i feel like after a certain point it gets old um right now we just have to accept where it is and again if it's if it's not for you it's not for you nine out of ten if you are still progging oh four this shit ain't for you it ain't um and that's just that's pretty much it that's the end all be all like if you can't clear 04 you're not doing this first of all um if you're not close to bis if you're nowhere near bis you're probably gonna have a rough fucking time i wouldn't do this shit if i were you um hell if you don't have bit mills go get those right now it takes five fucking minutes right now <laughs> Get uh, if you have an alchemist, you might have an easier time getting doing bit mills than you think. 
But um, if you don't have dip milk, you're probably fine. You, you, you'll probably struggle a little bit, but you're probably fine. Um, yeah, the, the whole accessibility argument is it, just played out to me. Just, just take things where they are, right? I would say take things where they are, know where you stand. If you want to do the content, you will, you will strive, you will do everything in your power to improve yourself, improve your gear to do said content. And that's pretty much all I can say. Okay. Um, the next thing is, and I was just going to pull this up right off the chat. Okay. So someone in the chat brings up the thought that uh, Ultimate's great as a one-up. Like, we're, we're talking about this and how it fits the exact portion. Do you mm -hmm. feel that come 4.3, will the idea of Ultimate have lost its novelty when it becomes just part of the cycle? And we'll be complaining about it just like all the other things that are part of the cycle. Part of the cycle. Yeah. Depends on the fight. Does it, though? I mean, does yeah, it, though? Yeah, I mean, yes. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. There's... Because when... When I first saw that the first ultimate we were getting was Coil, I'm like, okay, this is... How are they going to do a fight that we've done... Or fights that we've done once already? How are they going to add new playability new novelty to this fight they succeeded in that by you know putting putting ridiculous fucking mechanics in <laughs> and adding hard hitting mechanics and making it like exponentially di exponentially uh d more difficult um the next one it just depends on the fight like if you if you give us i can't i Honestly, couldn't see whether to go for the for the next one. Um, it would make sense for Alexander, maybe. But uh, honestly, I think we get Titan next. I think because of their statement about um, t it being between Titan and Bahamut, I feel like oh, Titan God. is just got to be my next go to get. As much as it'd be nice to guess Alexander right off the get go, and obviously I want my ultimate Faust. The fact that they struggled with that internally, depending on to which one to do, I feel like it just makes Titan the next, like, guaranteed one that's going to happen. It'd be really weird to choose between two and decide to do one first and then not do the other one second, if that makes sense. Hmm. Like, he, he even said the idea I've had about Titan for years, where you have to jump between the platforms because they're so small and he's broken them to a degree. And yeah, and the chat actually brings up a good point. They did the same thing with Samurai and Dark Knight, where they said, well, mm -hmm. we want to do Samurai for Heaven's Word, but Dark Knight makes more sense. We'll do Dark Knight now, and then they did Samurai later. Even though they... Uh, well, no, they said they, they already knew that they were they were pretty much doing Samurai, and Red Mage was the hard mm -hmm. one. That makes sense, because they had to... They, choo they chose between the two once before, and then just pushed Samurai off to the next one. I feel like this is going to be the same thing. I feel like Titan is our 4.3. I'm locking that in as my guess now. <laughs> I'm locking it in. I say they go the same route as what they're doing now. I say, and I say that we we get all the Warring Triad and our Tower of the God as as our next altar. Like because this is the closest thing. We're not gonna get a council fight in fourteen. We're never gonna get. I, I don't know. We uh, I don't know, dude. The, I, I feel like they proved they could do council fights pretty well with the second part of A Eight Savage. With a, yeah, A eight was probably the closest thing we're gonna get to it. Um, in this, I think this would be our what we have here, and ultimate would be our quote unquote council style, and we will get. I think we get that in the next ultimate with um, a warring tribe. Fight. I think warring tribe is one that will happen at some point. We've had we've had the discussion about which ones we th we'd like to see. We, you you want you with the the route of like uh, Gaius and um, yeah regular and. Um, I want I want the original four Legatuses, and maybe you could throw in Xenos there as well. But mm -hmm. I was always of the idea since before the first fan fest, I've wanted a fight against Gaius, Nero, uh, uh, Ritatin, and uh, mm -hmm. God, Olivia. I always forget. Yeah, there you go, Livia. I, I almost said the sister's name. I, I for some reason I just couldn't remember Livia. <laughs> Yeah, I just, I could I just kept the 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 Ishgard one. I kept wanting to say her name, mm -hmm. and I just I don't know I couldn't get Livia out there. Um, so that's my wish. But I think Titans I think Titans like going to be locked in for four point three. That's just personally mm -hmm. how I feel. 
Um, okay, so one thing I want to show the chat before we uh, we maybe go through a few more concerns that the chat's bringing up, because you guys have actually been feeding us a lot of these ideas to, of discussions for this stream. So it's, like I said, that's why we brought up the point, the chat brought up the point of, is the discussion alone worth it? You know, that's something that the chat was discussing. Um, we also want to show off something that Sly's probably a little less thrilled about, and that of what the actual weapons look like. <laughs> Sly, I'm sorry. Okay, listen, I didn't, I didn't make the yeah, weapon. I'm just, I'm just gonna fuck off over here while you just go through that because I don't, I don't. Um, I'm just shit. gonna pull up an Imgur folder that someone posted on Reddit as okay. opposed to pulling them up in game because I think that's that'll, fine. that'll probably be That's a little fine. bit easier. I, I don't really know what the right size is, but I guess if your spear looks like shit, it doesn't really matter what size. I yeah, 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 I don't. Give um, me. okay, so let's see. I think, I think this will, this will be good enough. In fact, I could probably move it over a little bit more. That way, it's. Kind of just like, yeah, there you go. That way the ads aren't there. So that's the Astro weapon. By the way, you guys can check this out in-game. Uh, if you go to the NPC where you get your Susano and Lakshmi weapons, you can actually preview them in-game. You don't need to beat Bahamut Prime in order to do this. That's the Astro weapon. That's the Bard weapon. That's the Black Mage weapon. Here's come, here comes the best one. The Dragoon weapon. Slide that. Doesn't, how doesn't this look good? I don't know what the fuck you're talking about, man. Just keep going. Doesn't that look good? Just keep going. Does that, does that not look good? It's I think it looks like ass. shit. <laughs> it looks like ass. I think it looks like shit, personally. Yeah. Yeah, so um, I'll definitely be glamoring over that shit. There, yeah. Uh, you have the, the two-handed sword here. I think, dude, the fucking machinist gun is a goddamn grenade launcher. It's fucking amazing. Don't you wish your fucking spear was a grenade launcher? In this case, yes. To go full Monster Hunter on that thing, all right? Just make it do some crazy shit. Gunlance. Yeah. All right, we got the Monk Fists, which are my my kind of flavor. We got the Ninja Daggers right here. We've got the sword. This is the sword, and then the next picture is of the shield, which, by the way, I think the pa some of the Paladin weapons... I think the Paladin, the Paladin sword and shield are among the best-looking ones, personally. The best. I don't know about the best, but definitely, like, up there. I think, it's, I think that the golden like aura kind of just looks better on the shield mm -hmm. than it does on most other things and also the little effects that are on the edges of it the red mage mm -hmm. one the rapier doesn't look that good but the the offhand looks pretty good over there um the katana that now i think the sheath is the winner here which is why it's being shown from this angle the katana looks great as pure gold but the sheath <sighs> yeah the sheath is Bad Dude, it's all, it might be over 100 degrees in San Diego, but it doesn't. You don't need that to see that. That's a fucking hot sheath. <laughs> hot. You have the fucking scholar book, which looks like shit. Don't worry. I think the scholar book looks worse than your fucking spear. You have the summoner book, which, which looks way better, and you have the axe, which looks pretty good, and you have the. I think this is the yeah, the white mage cane here at the bottom. So don't worry, Sly. One day, one day you'll get. Uh, Think about this, dude. Start thinking about the Titan Spear and how that's going to look pure gold. I'll give you a hint, Sly. It'll it's going to look like, like shit. Ass. <laughs> yes. You're, you're telling me shit I, like, I already know. God damn. Oh, well, man. Well, nice. What spears even look good? You know, I, doesn't the spear from Stone Vigil look all right? You're going, you're digging way. Dude, the shadow <laughs> bow. What do you mean? Dude, do your squadrons. I see these fucking weapons all the time. <laughs> I'm good. I mean, like shit, like Relic. I I'm going to have to wait on new Relic in order for me to get actual good. good what if your weapons? Relic it looks like a level 16 spear like the fucking Warriors? We, but the thing is, we never get shafted on Relic. I feel like, uh, like. Mostly, what, warrior and shit get shafted on Relic? We hardly get shafted. Oh, yeah, I mean, Warrior's Relic looked good until it got to the phase where it looked like an Iron Labrys. Yeah. I think it'll be alright. I think they'll be alright, Sly. Alright, so I think we've hit most of the points here. Uh, I haven't seen... Mm -hmm. I, I do want to do one really quick check of something. This I think this is something that could be uh, super, super important towards our discussions in the future but mm -hmm. i'm i'm not seeing any just yet let me let me just go to the uh, official forums real quick 
Mm -hmm. Let's just see. Is anybody asking for this to be nerfed yet? <laughs> Excuse me. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. Is anyone asking for this to be nerfed yet? Welcome to the English forum. Where are the general forums here? General discussion. All right, let's see what general discussion. All right, uh, locking Balmon Gilgamesh not working. I remember that one. Small rant here. Tales from the Duty Finder about the werewolf outfit. No, nope, doesn't look like anyone gives a shit. <laughs> not yet. Not, not yet. yet. Least. Wait, 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 wait until after the first day. Yeah, then you'll start to see more. You know, please nerf. Please, please make more difficult. Yada yada yada. It's I see nerf ninja. Out. Ninja's pretty fucking OP. You gotta admit. Dragoon's mm. pretty stupid right now, too, but... Yeah. But Ninja's been stupid forever. And every time that you think they're doing something... Oh, yeah, finally, look at that. Oh, no, never mind. Nope. It was just a bug. They're fixing it. They're equaling everything out. It's God not a damn. bug. It's a feature. It's not a bug. It's a feature. I checked, I checked Reddit. I don't see much on the front page, but it may be under new. Let's see. Why are crafted items always multiple times the material cost? Increased text bubble size, is it me, or is gear ugly in 14? Obviously, these are hitting the issues that matter most, so uh, it doesn't, I don't really see much. So what you're saying is Ultimate doesn't matter. <laughs> Not yeah. right now. Well, I Not mean, let's, right see, now. let's see if any of these are, are, are controversial. Let's go to the con. Good luck to everyone. Uh, you know, no, no one leaves what I've really been waiting for. Uh, bullseye, how do raids work? Uh... I'm just reading them, man. Don't. That's it. Servers are up. That's it. Oh, there's. Oh, it's in the sticky notes. Oh, there's the mega thread for the unending coil. I'm just going to do control F N E R F. And I found one result, which I think is hiding behind the. Co oh, no. Let's see. Um, nope. That's a. Oh, you know what? It probably is not showing them because. They're probably downvoted. <laughs> this one was deleted, deleted. There's new music. Load. Oh my god, that's a that's a question. All right. Yeah, I don't know. I don't. I'm not. See I'm seeing people complaining about the 04 Savage requirement more than I'm seeing people nerf it. But I mean, we saw that coming a fucking mile away. Mile away. Yeah. Ah, uh, yeah. So, I don't know. That, that's, not, that's not even, like... I wouldn't even bring that up for discussion. But, like but, but Sly... Sly, I'm gonna... This, I wanted to take that and present you with one final question. Okay. Do they item level lock this so you can't unsync it in future patches? Now, hmm. I'm not saying do you think they will. I'm saying are you of the opinion they should or should not and why? Well, the only thing I have to compare it to is um, Second Coil Savage, and we did that unsynced. Uh, we were we have the ability to do it unsynced. It, uh, it's just when when you really talk about that, you have to talk about the time frame of which you you um, you know keep it. I'm gonna say keep it. No. I just, I just generally say no for right now. No, you do not want them to item... Uh, no, you don't want them to item unblock this, or no, you don't think... I uh, Just give me a clear sentence. No, I don't. No, you don't. You Cut off. Item, you don't, item level. You don't want them to... Okay, why do you not want them to item level lock it, though? I just be... Well, I would just be curious as, as to how much we um can get away with. oh you just want to see you just out of your curiosity of seeing what it looks like like at it mm -hmm. okay okay let's say that they leave that option open right but if you don't okay. do it at minimum item level which we'll just say is 340 for the sake of whatever um right. let's say if you do it as that then you, you actually you can't get a to i know what i just realized you can't get a what? weapon if you do this unsynced because it doesn't drop from a chest it drops directly into your inventory doesn't it isn't that yeah. the only thing you don't get when you unsync a fight? You can still get the title, but am I not mistaken? Or would you already not get it anyway because it's not the item in the... Or is it the... Why are we overthinking this? No, because that was one of the big things when they added unsynced was that you couldn't get direct loot from the enemies. You could mm -hmm. only get loot from chests. This fight doesn't have loot from chests. Oh, uh, but you get EX totems unsynced. Yeah, no, we're fucked. That's, well... I guess not. Damn. 
was hope, hoping I was on to something like that. That might have been fine. I would have been cool with that. Otherwise, I don't know. I think it should stay. I felt this way. I felt differently about Second Coil Savage than mm-hmm. I do about this. Second why, Coil, why, why Second Coil? Second Coil Savage, it was just fucking titles, dude. I don't care if someone has a fucking title. Like, whatever. I mean, this, it's comparably, like, the only thing they added was a weapon. A weapon that really looks fucking terrible, but yeah, it's it's still the better we- the better weapon. And by the time, by the time you really want to consider going back to it, you know that that weapon that you just got will be completely irrelevant. So it does. It's it's yeah. along the same lines. It's along the same lines as second second quote savage. Yeah, but second quote savage didn't have a weapon. It had titles. Yeah. And you know what? Sometimes I see people unsync those and still fuck up the title. <laughs> and they still can't beat it. And they still can't get the titles. So, I don't know. The weapon, to me, is more valuable. And I'm, I'd am i be okay with people unsyncing to get, like, a title. But for mm-hmm. me, the weapon is more the, the trophy. Yeah. I mean, I'd feel a little bit better if I had a better fucking looking weapon. But, sure. It, yeah, it's stats. Hey. True endgame. No, it's glamour. It's a true endgame. So that's the show, everyone. Because, um, <laughs> you know, I'm never going to... Cl- Actually, no, I will glam this fucking item, all right? I'll glam this item until I get to the next ultimate. Pretty much. And I guess that's the other argument. Like, if another ultimate comes out, like, can you really have two fights be the ultimate fight? Yes, you can. Yes, you that's can. That's what I believe. You're fucking right you can. But that, yeah. I think on that note, I think we've managed to take this sly. It's been a good show. Thank you, mm-hmm. chat, for your interaction and for your Thank points you. of discussion. For us to uh, to really dive into a simple first impressions and thoughts on uh, the way the community is kind of reacting to it as a whole right now, Sly, why don't you uh, why don't you tell everyone where they can uh, find you at, my good sir? You can find me at twitch.tv slash Sly aka Gray Fox. You can find me on Instagram at Sly aka Gray Fox zero seven. You can find me on Twitter at Sly the Fox. You can find me on Facebook at Sly aka Gray Fox. You can find me on YouTube youtube.com slash the Velvet Room. You can find me uh, on 14 tonight on Twitch with my static. Getting getting fucking wrecked tonight for about like what, three hours. What are you yeah, doing this weekend, hours. Sly? And uh, you can find me uh, starting Thursday in Galveston, Texas for OniCon. Um, if you will be at OniCon, you know, feel free. Let me know. Hit me up on Twitter. Use words. I don't bite. I'll probably have a beer in my hand. Uh, I am being reminded of something I want to talk about, but we'll do our outro first, and then I'll just get your thoughts on it real quick. Just a quick prediction okay, okay. on something. Uh, okay. And then I guess I'll, I'll do my outro. Too yeah, yeah, yeah. Where can they find you? You can find me sweating my ass off in San Diego, where it's been over 100 degrees the last two fucking days. This fan on me, just blowing warm air, stagnant air in the room. Mm-hmm. It's disgusting. You can find mm-hmm. me, Mr. Happy 127 Twitch, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram. I've got some stuff going on this week, and I'm going to be going to Canada in December for an event called KupoCon. So hopefully mm-hmm. those of you will be uh, joining me there over in Toronto. Um, something else. Oh, and uh, some fresh news. This area behind me, that's going to be changing in the very near future because uh, my girlfriend and I are uh, leaving San Diego after only being here a year and a half, and we just got approved for a two-floor townhouse in Los Angeles. Angeles. Not going to go more specific, Woo! but new office, new space, uh, and uh, finally own a place where I can get my own DDR pad. <laughs> my metal DDR pad with the bar and everything. I am excited. I'm excited. Okay. That's that's uh, that's all you need to know for now. So, slide real quick before we get going, since I already shouted out our, our sponsors, mm-hmm. this could be the last point. PAX Australia mm-hmm. is coming up this weekend as well as OniCon. And for the first time ever, Final Fantasy XIV is making an appearance. We know Ethis will be there. We know Diyoshi will be there. And I think he mentioned, like, Hilmi Harry will be there and a few other people. I want to ask you one very simple question. Why now? Why now, PAX Australia? Never before, but why now? You're asking the wrong person. Sly, you don't think maybe they have... uh, Maybe they're finally going to be doing something that FS and crew have been waiting for for a long time. I feel like the only reason you do a, a Final Fantasy XIV thing for the first time ever in PAX Australia is if you got something big to announce. Blitzball. No. <laughs> no, 
<laughs> I I don't I don't know if it's time yet because I don't know if there's enough of a population for it. But could it be OC servers? Because at this point, the 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 because the Japanese servers have been getting locked down because the Australians go to the Japanese servers and it adds to the server congestion there. And they're now like there's some on Tomberry, and when that got locked, they will start going to Kajada, from what I understand. I think it's time. No time like the present, yeah. I just don't see any other reason to suddenly want all these Final Fantasy fourteen influencers and to have a presence at a PAX you've never cared about before. If you don't have something like that planned, it just doesn't make sense. So you you think they just wouldn't go to just no? I don't think packs without they a don't officially support the area. They have to like sign up with an EU account or sign up with an NA account. They have to sign up with an account that exists in another region. Their region is not like officially officially supported. It's sold there, mm -hmm. but it's not like supported supported. And it's been literally on the request list for like three years now. I'm trying to think when did um. When did Europe get this? The Europe got it with uh, Heaven's Word. Time see, the time frame seems about right. So, I mean, you could be you could be right. You could be right. This could be new servers for your. Uh, for uh, and keep in mind, this is OCE. This isn't just Australia to keep yeah, that in mind. Yeah, the oceanic region. So yeah, um, you could be right. I mean, you do. You do have a bigger budget. Games made a lot of money. <laughs> yeah. Games made a lot of money so they can do shit like F this. Fingers crossed for the Oceanic re re uh, region. Although I'm not sure how many people would want to leave their communities on the existing Aust like servers where the Australian communities exist. But mm -hmm. we'll see. We'll see if it even happens. If it does, then we'll see how it's received by the Oceanic region. I'm rooting for you guys because you guys deserve to have your own servers at this point. There's so many more people in Australia playing the game. It feels like more and more. So right. hopefully that ends up, ends up being the case. Fingers crossed for you guys. All right. On that note, Sly, I think we can wrap up, do a short post show, and you can uh, get off to your raid. Does that sound good? And then you can I mean, sleep. We, we, we can delay this as much as possible because if you want to keep a long fucking post show, that's fine by me. We can delay it as long as possible. Please. Sly, you're going to have a drink. You're going to raid. You're going to go to sleep. All right. All am right. I am I right? Yes. Goddamn right. All right, everyone. Thank you for joining us for this week's show. Again, thank you to the patrons we shouted out at the beginning of the show. We'll be back next week. And by then, Ultimate will probably be cleared. And we may have some more news. We'll also be looking out for patch 4.15 and the new PvP mode Rival Wings, which is due probably in sometime in the next two to four weeks. I'm still guessing three weeks from today. But that's just me. We will see you next week. And until then, take care. My ass ain't ready. That's cut. Uh, it's, not, it's not the right outro. That's fine. I'll just change it. I I did the correct outro, but this is still last week's. That's what I get, dude. I was too excited to talk about the topic. I didn't even like change the outro and shit. Here, watch. It's gonna update magically right here. Watch this. You guys aren't even ready for how awesome this is gonna look. You guys, you guys ready? Where the fuck no. Is it? Where the fuck is it? <laughs> Is that it? Yeah, that's it. Look at that. Boom. Seth. That's how I know this is the right one. Look at Seth. I see Seth. Just Seth. Just Seth. They're chilling at the bottom. Dude, Sly's